Good morning or good afternoon from for, for wherever you are. Um, I'm Kim, I'm here from ICAS. Um, and the purpose of the session is to support with um, some our thinking about money, um, some practical strategies around how to, how to uh, set up a budget. Um, we'll look at some of the, the challenges that we often find ourselves in in relation to managing our money. Um, I hope for an interactive session, we've got the Q&A box. Please do feel free to share your um, insights and also your questions throughout the session. I find that sessions like this one of the beauties of sessions like this is that there are there's so much expertise in the room as well. So if you've got some top tips, please do share it in the Q&A box. Um, I've got my colleagues who will be supporting me in that um, and they can publish those so that everyone can kind of learn from each other as well. Um, in terms of what we're going to cover, we will start with um, some of the reasons why uh, often a number of us experience financial difficulties. Um, we'll also look at the psychology behind spending. So what is it that influences how we spend our money? Um, we'll have some fun with money personalities. And for me, this a lot of this is about an awareness. Um, often, we, well, we live most of our lives in automatic. And um, the challenge with that is while we're on automatic, we're not making conscious decisions about stuff. So once we can come uh, move from that automatic into a more conscious approach, we're able to make better choices. We have more control. Uh, my profession is coaching and facilitation, so almost all of my work is starts with with just having an awareness, awareness of our um, our habits, our patterns, whether that's how we spend our money or how we deal with conflict, how we communicate. Um, then we'll look at some practical strategies. What are the things that we can do to take charge of our finances? Um, where do we start with all of this? We'll look at some basic steps for drawing up a budget um, and also some money saving tips. And again, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the chat box around some of your, your, uh, your tips, your advice. Um, I want to get us started with a, a question on Mentimeter. And the question is, how do you feel when you think and talk about money? How do you feel when you think and talk about money? Um, I've put a link in the Q&A box there now, which will take you through to the Mentimeter page. Please follow that link um, and, and share one or two words that describe how you feel when you think or talk about money. Um, you know, when there's that, oh, we, we need to we need to have a chat about the budget. <laughs> what emotions come up in you? So there's the link in the Q&A box, which will take you straight through to that question. The alternative is to follow the the instructions at the top of the screen, which is going to www.menti.com and then using that code 8037 five seven five six which is at the top of the page there yeah we've got some words coming in pressure embarrassed problems anxious debt empowered stress everything needs money money is not everything <laughs> happy luxury essential sensitive freedom never enough security safe rich investments need, splurge, serious, so many words coming up here. And, and as you're looking at these words appearing on the screen, I want to just acknowledge the emotions that we attach to money. Um, we can sometimes say, oh, it's just money. It's just stuff. Um, but but, but we, I think in doing that, we're denying the very emotional attachment that we have to money and talking ab about money and managing our money. Um, so let's acknowledge those emotions. It is, it's an emotive topic. Um, and, and part of the session is, is, is about looking at those emotions. What is it that influences how we feel about money um, and therefore how those feelings drive us to work with our money, um, whether it's uh, responsibly or irresponsibly? Okay, so connecting with your feelings, your own personal feelings about money and conversations about money, and then recognizing how those feelings drive our behavior. Lots of words coming up here. These common themes are happy, important, excited, 
freedom, anxious. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your words. OK, so um, yeah, often, oh, well, the stats, statistics show that 90, 96% of us at some point run into financial trouble. OK, 96% of us at some point run into financial trouble. And I've been one of those people in my life. I've been through uh, some various ups and downs in relation to my finances in the early, earlier days. Um, I, I think I've found my way pretty well now. but. Um, but most of us at some point will run into some sort of financial challenges. Um, and often the reason for that is either a lack of knowledge. So we just don't know how much interest we're, we're paying on our debt, for example. Um, or we, we don't know about uh, ways that we need to save. We don't know about how to budget, a lack of knowledge. Um, there could be a lack of foresight, just sort of living in the here and now, uh, what I need to do right now to live day to day um, without thinking about our future. Um, also, this borrowing for things that lose value. So we kind of want to um, meet our immediate wants, but um, but 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 and sometimes get into debt from wanting to meet those immediate wants. And I think, you know, things like Black Friday and so on, those things don't help us, do they? Because they create this sense of urgency that if I don't get it today, I'm never going to get it at this price. Um, and so we get ourselves into debt with this kind of sense of urgency and, and buying things that we want rather than things that we need. And then there's this must have it now mentality, which links very much into what I was just sharing now. Um, so the sense of urgency, et cetera. And with all of this, it's not having a plan, not having a goal. And so I hope that the session today inspires you, moves you to, to take some action around these things, um, to, to gather some knowledge about stuff that maybe you'd been avoiding, um, to think about what, what is your future and what are your what do you what financial situa situation do you need to be in for that future? Um, what are some of the things that maybe you're getting into debt for um, that that are losing value? Getting getting into debt for, on for day to day um, once. And what are some of the things that maybe you're spending in the sense of urgent spending money on in the sense of urgency? Um, and uh, and and really, that's probably going to stay in the cupboard for another couple of years, and then, um, if at all, get cleared out at some point. Now, of course, um, when we get into financial trouble, and as we've acknowledged, most of us do, that comes with some consequences. Um, often. We end up taking out loans to pay out loans. And I mentioned that I've had my own financial ups and downs. And I, I reflect on the when I first left uh, left the house, I um, moved from South Africa. I went to went to live in the UK. Um, so kind of fresh out of home, earning my first proper salary. Um, and after a couple of years, the, the, credit, the, 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 the credit card people start sending you cards through the post and it's like, oh, I've got a credit card. Um, and uh, doing all those things on the previous page that we shouldn't be doing. So got myself into a bit of debt and then, oh, OK, now um, I'm paying a lot of interest on my credit cards. So um, let me take out a loan so that I can pay off my credit cards, right? Very clever. Um, the challenge is that that I I wouldn't get rid of the credit card then. So I'm paying off the loan, uh, or I, I've used the loan to pay off the credit card, and then still spending on the credit card. So now I've got even more debt. Um, and it happens so easily. It happens so easily. And yeah, so we get have take out loans to pay pay off loans. Um, some people go to loan sharks, and that can be incredibly dangerous. Um, we often spiral into further debt, as I've just explained what happened to me. Um, and then the, very seriously, we have we get the stress that's associated with with uh, with our with health risks. Um, guys, my passion is neuroscience, understanding how our brain works and how we can use what we know about our brains to uh, bring out the best in ourselves and, and the people around us. And and I know what stress, unhealthy stress does to our brain. So a little bit of stress is good, but unhealthy stress 
causes um, our brains to produce inflammasomes, which causes inflammation in the body. And inflammation is linked to things like arthritis, um, heart disease, cancers. It's a, it's, it's, it's a serious thing. It's something to be taken seriously. And, and I've seen, I've seen the, the trauma that, um, that in, ineffective money management can have on, on our bodies, on our brains and our bodies and, and then and relationships as well. Um, we might experience changes in our behavior because we're in this stress state. Um, we're worried about being able to survive um, and being in a state of survival changes our behavior. We become more irritable. We become more sensitive. Um, this impacts on our relationships, both at home and at work. Uh, I, I also grew up um, in a, with my family having there was quite a little bit, quite a bit of conflict in our house around money management. We might find that we struggle to concentrate. Um, our confidence, our self-esteem can be impacted. I recall when I was looking at the words that were appearing up on the screen there, um, the word embarrassed came up. They, they there can be a sense of that. So, um, so this is what we want to avoid. Um, acknowledging that the consequences of ineffectively managing our money um, are severe, and this is what we want to avoid. Some of you might be familiar with the term over-indebtedness. So over-indebtedness is when we owe more money than we earn. When our out outgoings are more than our income every month. Um, and I don't know what the what the global statistics are, but I know in South Africa, it's pretty much five in 10 people. In fact, it might even be more. It might be six in 10 people um, uh, are over indebted. So their outgoings are more than their income every year. And of course, that's that's a downward spiral. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. So I'm going to share a few reflection questions with you to get you thinking about your how aware you are of your financial situation. Remember, this session is all about awareness, taking that autopilot way of spending and putting it in front of us so that we can work with that. Um, so to support with that, here's some questions to reflect on. What are your current spending habits? Just think about the last few months um, and and what are your patterns? What are your spending patterns? How easily do you do you spend money on the big things and the small things? Um, what's your sort of thought process? How do you make decisions around how you spend your money? What are your patterns? What are your habits? And then what security do you have in place or what security do you need long term and short term? Um, based on, on your circumstances, um, your responsibilities, whether you're flying solo or have a, a family that relies on you, um, depending on also the stage in your life, what is the security that you need right now short term? And what is the security that you, um, sorry, what do you have in place and what is, what do you have in place for, for future? What are your financial priorities? What are the things that are important to you financially right now? Who do you need to support or look after? Um, thinking about the stage in your life, what are what are some of the things, um, the priorities that might be coming up for you in the next few years? Do you know how much interest you're paying on your credit? Be honest with yourself. Any credit that you have, are you aware of how much interest you're paying on your credit?
What is your debt recovery plan? If you are finding yourself in debt, what is your recovery plan? And then the last question is, what plans do you have for the future? As you're reflecting on these questions, um, I'd love to hear from you in the Q&A box if there's anything coming up for you here. Anything that you've become aware of that maybe you were um, avoiding or, uh, or sort of putting to the side. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear from you in the Q&A box. Please share. Kim, we've just had two mm. comments in the chat block. We've had someone saying that there's a very impulsive online shopping going on at the moment, and also someone saying that they need a retirement plan for flexibility for career break. Uh, so we have had two responses so far. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so thanks. It's sharing that awareness, um, the awareness of my, uh, my impulsive online shopping, um, and also this awareness of, of needing a retirement plan um, and a bit of flexibility for for our careers or career break. Thank you. And I encourage you to, um, you can take a screenshot of these questions, reflect back on them at points in your life and just check in with yourself. Some more awareness here in the Q&A box. Um, recognizing that they don't t take note of how much interest are on their credit cards. Yeah, uh, and this is common. This is, abs you know, it's a, it's normal. Um, and this is what it's all about is becoming aware. OK, so I'm going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to on this along this line of awareness. I'm going to have some fun with um, six different money personalities. Um, so I'll share these these money personalities with you. And as I share them, Reflect on where you find yourself and, and be kind, be kind to yourself. We're all human here where it's normal for us to fall into one or two of these areas. Um, so yeah, have some fun. Reflect on where you find yourself here. This, uh, this comes from an article in the Financial Times. So the six personalities that I'm going to reflect on are firstly the anxious investor. So this person, um, they, they love that risk. Um, they're normally trading frequently or maybe gambling quite frequently, but they're normally a little bit overconfident um, in their in their abilities. So they tend to um, they tend to get very excited and very enthusiastic, but probably mm, beaten by the markets or or losing money on their gambling rather than gaining ga gambling sensibly. So your anxious investor. The next one is hoarder, and I, I think I tend to fall into this one. Um, and this is about money, money is security. So um, um, kind of being almost anxious about spending money, anxious about investing, anxious, anxious about um, uh, 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 even saving sometimes. So keeping their money in their savings account, in their, their sort of standard account, rather than putting money into savings and investing and taking a little bit of risk for um, for a bit of gain. So this 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 personality tends to be quite fear driven your hoarder. Social value spender. Um, so this is very much about shopping to boost their self-esteem. Um, and this could be shopping for themselves. It could also be shopping for other people. Uh, and they tend to blow their budgets on, on retail therapy. But it's all about kind of feeling good about themselves. Um, your cash splasher can look a little bit similar to your social value spender, um, but their needs are a little bit different. So this is more about being appearing sort of successful and um, spending money money quite visibly. So don't worry, I'll get the bill. Um, and they, they, they might spend money on sort of expensive things, often that they don't need. Then you've got your Fitbit financier. Um, and 
these guys are super obsessive about keeping track of everything. So they've normally got a couple of apps on the go. Um, they're checking their, their sort of balances and everything on a, multiple times a day, um, obsessively, sort of in an, in an unhealthy way. And then you've got your ostrich. So your ostrich um, is more about just bury, if I bury my head in the sand, it'll all go away. If I go la 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 la, everything will be fine. <laughs> so this person, um, you'll often find those unopened bills lying on the table. Um, or maybe they've given their money to a financial advisor, but they're not paying any attention to what's being done with it. They're not interested. They are not opening up the emails or anything like that. So there's kind of like just if I don't look at it, it'll go away. So reflect on on which person, money personality you find yourself in, and <clears throat> share with us on Mentimeter. Uh, the link is the same as the one that I shared earlier, but I'll put it in the Q and A box again. So using that link, uh, share with us on Mentimeter where you find yourself here. I'm seeing some in the Q and A box as well. Uh, people resonating with hoarder the Fitbit financier and social value spender. Yeah, absolutely. A question in the Q&A box here, what's the difference between a hoarder and a Fitbit financier? So a hoarder is um, is more about, it, it's quite, it, they are both um, sort of fear driven maybe, um, possibly, but the hoarder is more about uh, keeping my money to myself, um, whereas the Fitbit financier, they they probably have got investments and stuff, but they're tracking it all the time, so obsessively tracking it. I hope that answers your question. Great, we've got some responses coming in here. Lots of people resonating with the hoarder. Uh, quite a few people, are the Fitbit financier, social value spenders. Um, well done to the ostriches who are here. By by being here, you're putting, you're taking your head out of the sand. So, <laughs> so welcome, ostriches. A few cash splashes, some anxious investors. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. And as I say, you know, be kind to yourself about this. We're all human. And uh, as we've recognized, money is emotive. Um, and so those emotions kind of drive us to make decisions, sometimes responsible, sometimes not responsible. Um, but just being aware of that helps us. Thank you. <laughs> oh, by the way, for the, the Fitbit financiers, please do share in the Q&A box if you've got some cool apps that you recommend. Uh, for the rest of the people on the call who, that they might want to use to track their spending. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing. <clears throat> um, so to to carry on with this this relate the 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 uh, awareness of of our money management, I'm going to share a few reflection questions around our relationship with money. What is it that influences? which money personality we find ourselves in. And again, there'll be some reflection questions. So take a moment to, 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 um, to reflect on these. Uh, if you want to look away from the screen and take yourself back to your childhood, um, make a few notes for yourself. So these questions, how did you experience money when you were younger? What was your experience in your childhood about money? Um, how did you see your parents deal with money or parents deal with money? Um, how, what did you learn from them about how to manage your money? What are your cultural beliefs about money? Often our, our, our cultural beliefs also influence how we spend our money. Um, 
Sometimes it's about the, 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 uh, the culture is that I need to be really looking after my family and extended family. So, of course, that will influence our, how the decisions that we make about our money. Um, sometimes it's very much about appearing a certain way um, that might affect or maybe maybe the cultural be belief is not to speak about money at all. You know, we don't talk about that. Reflecting on that. How have you learned to think about money? Um, and this might link into the, the feelings that you shared at the beginning of the session. How have you learned to think about money? How have you learned to manage your finances? How have you, um, sorry, how have you learned to make financial decisions? So reflecting on your childhood, reflecting on the experiences that you've had. What have you learned in relation to how to think about money, how to manage your finances, how to make financial decisions? Um, if I uh, reflect on my, my own experiences, so as I said, I, I experienced quite a lot of conflict in my childhood around with mom and dad fighting about finances, etc. Um, and so I think maybe that's where that hoarder personality has come in. So I've become quite fearful about how about spending money or getting into debt or anything like that. Um, so that's maybe that 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 that's where uh, yeah that links into the fear. Um, but on the other side, one thing that my parents did, which was amazing, um, was in my teenage years they started giving me a little bit more pocket money, but that pocket money had to cover all of my expenses. So things like my toiletries, um, if I wanted to buy clothes, any of that stuff all had to come out of my own pocket money. And they were really strict about that as well. So, <laughs> um, uh, And I'm so grateful for that because that's really helped me in my older years to to learn the value of um, of money, you know, um, going into the shop and looking at different shampoos, for example, you know, as a typical teenager, you don't really think about um, the difference in price between different shampoos. But when you're spending your own money, then, <laughs> and even the difference in price with toothbrushes, th things like that, which otherwise I, I wouldn't have paid attention to uh, suddenly when I was spending, when it was my own money to spend, those prices became quite important. Um, reflecting on, do you show, do you use money to, to show your love? Uh, and and again, this is something to kind of be kind to yourself about, curious to uh, curious about. Um, some of you might be familiar with the five love languages. If you're not and you're interested, go and have a look. Um, and it just talks about how different people um, express their love and like to receive love. Uh, and one of those is is gifts. Um, and so uh, recognizing that if, if gifts is one of your ways of expressing your love for people. Um, I know my mom tends to be uh, along those lines. She loves to buy gifts for people. How does money relate to your self-image and self-esteem? Um, something to reflect on is that quite often working parents um, there's a, a sense of guilt because parents aren't spending as much time with their kids and so they tend to kind of overcompensate for that by, by buying lots of stuff. And sometimes there's a kind of a self-justification, spending money irresponsibly because there's this feeling of, well, I've worked hard for it and I deserve it. Um, I uh, just reminded of <clears throat> one of my friends who is often in financial troubles and often talking about how, you know, he can't pay the bills, etc. But then when he does get an income from a job that he's done, he'll tend to splash out on a really expensive whiskey because he's deserved it. But at the same time, he's not able to pay his bills. So just being aware of things like that. I'd love to hear from you in the Q&A box. What's coming up for you? around some of these questions. Ryan, have we got some some things that have come up in our in the Q&A box? 
we've got a few things that are coming up, Kim. So we have a few people who've been speaking a little bit about, you know, um, what it's been like growing up uh, without money. Um, we've had some people who've been sharing some tips. Um, one of the ones that I quite enjoyed was when somebody said that they've been using uh, YouTube investment channels. So maybe some informal um, training that we never really consider. Um, some people have been saying, um, you know, money equals freedom. Um, money is important to live life to the fullest. And so I think we've got a few of those uh, splurges on the call as well um, you know uh, somebody giving us a really really nice quote saying money can come and go what matters is how you manage it and how you spend it um, maybe Kim if we can maybe address maybe a, a, a question from from maybe from my side is you know you, we talk about how these relationships sort of interact with our spending habits do you think from your side that these are like some firm relationships or do you think that there's a little bit of leeway where people can have you know a little bit of both or you know because I think some people are thinking you have to fit into one category and not the other. Um, do you think there's a little bit of interaction between the two? Oh yeah, absolutely. And and in different stages of our lives, we might experience different money personalities. Um, so yeah, so so if you're resonating with a few of them, that's absolutely fine. Uh, those those personalities. The purpose of that is just to become aware of that. Um, that uh, that awareness gives us a bit of power and control. So. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for, sh for sharing the common themes there and also that great question. Thanks. Um, also looking at some of the, the things in the Q&A box here. This is great. And uh, one of the things that you shared, Ryan, was around um, uh, it's it's not about the money, but how we spend it. And um, and I absolutely agree. So um, when I was looking at the, the, the various statistics, <clears throat> one that stood out for me was that 36 percent of divorced couples attribute their breakup to financial trouble. Um, and I know from my own experience as well as working with clients and so on that mm, I don't believe that those breakups are about not having enough. I believe it's about a mismanagement of or not being able to communicate about money, not having a an agreement on how we are spending our money. So, so think about um, your current situation and, and reflect on how, how you discuss your finances at home at the moment. What do those conversations look like? How do they go? Um, what do your family know about your financial situation? Uh, what are you teaching your family about managing finances? And there are a few things that come up for me here. So my, my fiance and I are in different financial situations, which can make it a little bit tricky when you're kind of spl splitting bills and things like that. Um, and so it's it's been really become really important for us to have conversations about our fin financial situations. And in the beginning, that was really difficult. <laughs> um, but but we've worked out a really good, a good way to do this now, and that's by having team talks. So we literally call them team talks, um, so that the 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 focus and um, intention is about you know we're in this together. We're a team here. So let's talk about you know how what we all bring to the team and making sure that each of us feel that things are fair and all that kind of stuff. And that works really well to have these team talks. Um, another thing that came up for me when I was reflecting on these questions was, uh, <laughs> so I, I do a lot of cycling and I often hear the guys talking about, you know, that they don't tell their wives how much they're spending on their bikes. And it's all funny and all that stuff, but but that can come with some consequences. And what are we teaching our kids? Like, are, are our kids learning to lie about what they're spending their money on <laughs> um, and how they're spending their money? I'd love to hear if there's anything coming up in the Q&A box around, around this. We've got one question that's come through, Kim. Um, mm. So uh, somebody saying that we noticed there's a trend on younger generation search for financial freedom. Could you maybe share some light on how uh, people are looking or can achieve financial freedom in your your own personal opinion? I think that's a very interesting question. Mm. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. So for me, it, uh, awareness of how we're spending our money, which is what this is all about, um, we'll go into some basic uh, basic tips uh, shortly in the session. So how we can become more aware of our spending habits, um, how we can use that awareness to budget better, um, and then also some tips on, on spending money more responsibly. 
Um, for me, what's really important is having someone that you can talk to about this, whether it's a financial advisor or even informally like a money mentor is what I call it. I've got one of my coaching clients is um, is has has connected with a someone that they respect um, in terms of how they make their financial decisions. And that person is now acting as like an informal mentor for them. Um, and I think that creates this accountability. Um, it also prevents us from burying our heads in the sand because we're having to talk to someone else about our financial situation and just kind of getting some some wisdom around how we make our financial decisions. So, um, but I'll, I'll share a little bit more on that later on in the session. Thanks, Ryan, for that. Okay. So, so this takes us into what we can do, taking control of our finances. Once we've got this awareness, what then? Um, and there are a few questions to reflect on or statements to reflect on when when spending our money. So before you before you splurge or uh, or spend money on things, ask yourself what what am I spending my money on? Really, what am I spending my money on? Um, even further, like what 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 need am I spending my money on? Is it a need or is it a want? Is this long term pain for short term gain? Is this a kind of um, splurging on something now which is going to get me into trouble further down the line? Why am I buying this? Why am I buying this? Uh, what is the financial impact of my purchase on me and on my family? Is it wise to buy consumable goods, foods and cleaning material on credit? Am I getting into debt for day to day expenses? Um, and for me, the, the trick here is not just checking in using these questions to check in when we're spending bigger money, when we're buying bigger things, but very much on the smaller stuff, that cup of coffee even, right? And and guys, this is not to say that I, I'm not, I don't want to turn everyone into hoarders and I don't want, I don't want everyone to go around um, with fear about how we spend our money. Because when you, when you reflect on these questions, some of the, quite often you might kind of go, well, yes, actually I am spending my money responsibly. And yes, I'm going to get this coffee and I'm going to get this top or whatever. So, so it's not about, it's not about sort of avoiding spending our money. It's just being aware, more conscious when we spend our money and rather, rather than going into unhealthy spending habits that, that we may have done previously. Um, so maybe you want to formulate your own check-in question. Your own question to ask yourself before spending money. Um, and the reason why I say it's it's that it's as important to do this with the smaller spends is because it gets us into a habit. It gets us into a habit of checking in, checking in. If I'm checking in with myself for the smaller spends, then I'm more likely to check in with myself for the bigger spends. So um, drawing up a budget, if we, when we draw up a budget, it helps us to be more aware of our financial situation. Um, it also helps us to become more self-disciplined about adhering to those budget limits. When you're tracking your money, and I, I saw some, some people were sharing in the Q&A box about using a spreadsheet and so on, when you're tracking it, you can't help but being aware of how you're spending your money and what you're spending your money on. So it helps us to be more disciplined about how we um, how we spend and how we invest. It also helps us to ensure that our expenses aren't exceeding our income, so we don't get into that over indebtedness. Um, and the recommendation here is that we involve our whole family. Let let the family learn from how we're working with our money. Maybe there's some parents in the room who can share what works for you. Uh, how, how are you teaching your children to work with money? Please do share in the Q&A box. How are you teaching your children to work with money? I'm also seeing in the Q&A box here, uh, people reflecting on 
Um, there are three important pillars to uphold a relationship or marriage. Finance is one of the, co the core pillars, absolutely. Yeah, and that, uh, Ryan, as you say, the open and honest communication around that. I'm seeing um, some people sharing that they're communicating their financial state with their children as well. That's fantastic. Wonderful, thank you. So here's an example of um, what a budget might look like. And for me, the trick is keeping it simple. Um, if we, when I start making things too complex, I'm less likely to stick to it. So uh, one of my friends says, budget as you can, not as you can't. <laughs> so do what you can, not what you can't. Um, so what that looks like for me is I started with looking at my last four months of spending. When I first drew up my budget, I looked at my, my spending over the last four months. Um, so just sitting with my bank statement and quite often our banking apps actually group our spending for us quite nicely. So they can tell you what you've spent on um, shopping and um, fuel, et cetera, et cetera. So making a little spreadsheet and literally putting in every single um, every single uh, thing that I've spent money on and categorizing that. Um, making a note of our net income. So that's our income after tax. What are you getting? What income are you getting on a, a monthly basis? Uh, what are your fixed payments? So those fixed payments are uh, payments that don't change your monthly rent or uh, mortgage, um, any policies that you might have, um, your set bills that you're, you're paying, electricity, things like that, rates. Your variable payments. So these are payments that we have to make, but they will vary every month, like your food, um, transport, and then your discretionary payments. These are the, the wants rather than the needs. So looking at your last four months um, and what's what have, what have your spendings been in each of these areas? What have you been spending money on and how much? And then with that in mind, what is a fair or reasonable budget in relation to each of those areas? And then the tracking comes in. So tracking um, what you're actually spending in relation to the budget that you've set for yourself. Um, and I found just from doing this for a few months, it immediately got me into healthier spending habits. It immediately helped me to be more aware of how I spend my money and where I spend my money. Um, one of the big insights that, that came out for me from doing this was recognizing that I was wasting a lot or spending a lot of money unnecessarily from, um, from d doing my grocery shopping day to day. So just running down to the convenience store and getting a few bits for dinner. Um, rather than buying, we uh, doing like a weekly or even a two week grocery shop, which is what I do now. And I've saved so much money just from that one simple change. Um, I also realized I was spending a lot of money on coffee <laughs> and how that all adds up that that daily coffee. Um, I still get my coffee pretty frequently, but not every day like I used to. <laughs> I'd love to um, hear from you guys in the Q&A box if anyone has, has done this and what insights you gained from, from looking at your spending and also putting a bit of a budget together. I'd love to hear from you in the Q&A box if you've done this and what came out of that for you. What were some of your learnings? I'm seeing some of the comments. Oh, Ryan, maybe you could put, share if there's any comments that came out. I can see there's quite a few around uh, how people have, are teaching their children to ma uh, manage their money. Uh, yes, one. of course, Kim. So um, one was somebody saying that they play um, with their children, Millennia, the board game. I also mentioned that Monopoly is something nice to try because it puts, you know, saving money into a very, very nice childlike perspective. So I think that's really, really cute, something that I haven't thought about. Um, somebody else, else saying that they've been teaching their teenagers, you know, um, if they want to pay for something, um, if they have three items to buy, please make sure you have three payments ready and not trying to buy three and only paid one and then you two times on the debt, uh, which I thought was also quite interesting. And um, I see somebody else is coming through with, um, you know, coffee. And I must be honest, Kim, I, I agree with you. The coffees do add up. I'm starting <laughs> to find that as well. Um, 
even me personally, I've been doing my budgets over the last couple of months, and it's been interesting to see uh, the rate of inflation and everything, which I think is also quite important, you know, to try mm. and keep track of everything. Um, I see somebody coming through saying eating, drinking out, and Ubers are the biggest expenses. Um, I have to agree with that person on that one. <laughs> um, I think just by reading out people's comments, I think, you know, what people are starting to pick up on is, is maybe just a bit of awareness of where their spending is going. Because I think, you know, once you start highlighting to people where some of their money is going, it then starts to you know like start to sink home a little bit mm -hmm. um somebody else saying i've been tracking my budget for two years and it gives you a sense of where you spend too much unnecessary expenses so you can t cut down on those things and Fantastic. so I, I see we're building some awareness um Wonderful. but yeah i think those are those are some of the key takeaways that we're getting through on the chat block on the side Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. Some good tips in there. Um, and also people sharing how they how they've been budgeting for themselves. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, so once we've got our budget, um, another good practice is especially if, well, if you have debt is to to look at look at what the situation is around your debt. Um, so the recommendation here is to list your creditors. Who are or what? Who, which organisations do you owe money to? Um, look at how much you owe to each of those organisations or people. So listing your debt balances, noting your monthly minimum repayments. Now this is an awareness thing, um, and I can I can tell you from my own experience that if you're just paying the monthly minimum repayments, you are going to be in debt for a very very long time. Um, those monthly minimum repayments, they might make us feel a little bit better or feel like we're paying things off, but we're really not. Um, it's come most of that that monthly minimum repayment covers the interest and like the tiniest little bit of chip off the off the debt. But just being aware of what the monthly minimum repayment is. Um, and then also how much interest you're paying on each creditor. How much interest you're paying on each creditor. Um, and then once you've got that that awareness that in front of you, uh, a, a, a good way to go about it is starting with the smallest balances first. And there's some psychology behind this because when we're paying off this ginormous amount of money and we're just doing it in little bits, little bits, little bits, it can feel quite demotivating. Like, oh. Like we're not getting anywhere with it. But when we start with the small, smallest uh, um, accounts first, the smallest balances first, then it feels like we're getting somewhere. And that 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 sort of sense of getting somewhere gives us more energy to to keep keep focused, keep keep it up, keep doing it. Come on. Um, and also when we're doing that, we, we can start closing those accounts. So once those smallest balances are paid off, uh, um, we can use that the, the money that we have been paying on those things to then start paying off the bigger stuff. And we've got some good energy and momentum going by that point. Um, and so when we when we start with that, also looking at those accounts that have got the, the highest interest rates and getting stuck into those. Um, <clears throat> There's some really great tips, ways to save, and and um, I'll share some of my own here as well. But I'd also love to hear from you in the Q and A box. Uh, what are your money saving tips? So a few general things: saving on ATM fees, uh, having a look at just having a look at your bank charges, and noticing where you might be able to sa save some money on on your bank charges. Uh, for example, in South Africa, we can you can get cash back at a till, which costs far less than drawing cash from an ATM, for example. Or using my card to pay for something rather than drawing money and, and spending cash. On that note, a little saving tip um, if you're you know, if you're really trying to stick to your budget um, is to draw cash as your spending money. So if you've budgeted X amount of money as like for luxury stuff, then draw that money as cash um, so that you uh, so, so that you and, and then kind of practice being disciplined about spending the cash rather than paying for things on our card. Because I think sometimes when you're just putting your card out, we can lose track of, of our spending, whereas when it's hard cash, then I can see what I've got left to spend. Um, so there's a, a money saving tip there, or budgeting tip. 
Um, looking at your bills, your, your electricity bill, your water bills, etc., and seeing um, if there are any ways to save on, on energy. There might be also, depending on which country you're in, you might have some uh, competitors, so comparing prices. Oh, this has been a big one for me. Planning weekly meals and only buying items on your list. So one of the things, the, the changes that my fiance and I have made since we started uh, budgeting is to uh, do a weekly meal plan on a Sunday um, and it doesn't take long. It sounds, it, I think uh, previously I've kind of bolted, I, I procrastinated on it, I built it up to be a bigger thing than it needed to be really because it's quite pretty quick, <laughs> quick and easy and um, we do a quick meal plan for the week um, and then I do my shopping based on that meal plan and that that has saved us a lot of time as well as money. Um, and you kind of, uh, it helps to avoid that, oh, that daily question of, so what are we going to have for supper tonight? <laughs> Budgeting for your entertainment and um, possibly changing how, you, how you're having fun, getting a little bit creative with how we have fun. Um, and Google is your friend here. I quite often I'm I'm based in Cape Town, and uh, a while ago I just Googled free things to do in Cape Town or things to do in Cape Town for 50 rand, just as, as an example. And it's amazing how much comes up. And there's so many things um, that that so many um, experiences and and places that came up that I had never thought of otherwise. So use Google. Getting a money mentor, I mentioned this earlier, um, and a money mentor can be just an informal relationship, someone who you respect for the way that they manage their money. Um, either, either, either getting yourself a mentor, so someone who you kind of who uh, who you look up to, or maybe just an accountability buddy. Have someone who you um, connect with. Uh, where you've agreed with each other, that you're going to hold each other accountable, that you're going to help each other with your budgeting, that you're going to um, chat through your um, your spending or your financial decisions with somebody. If you find yourself in unhealthy debt from your store cards, then, um, then leaving those at home to avoid temptation. Uh, putting money into your savings account on payday. Sometimes people are like, OK, I'll um, let me see what's left at the end of the month and then I'll put that into my savings account. And the reality is that often there's not very much left at the end of the month. So being quite disciplined, once, of, once you've done your budget, you'll be able to see how much you can afford to put into your savings account. Um, and so being disciplined about putting that into your savings account on payday rather than waiting till the end of the month. Um, having a look at websites where you can get discounted goods. Uh, something that 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 helps me here is first knowing what it is that I'm looking for and then going onto those discount websites because sometimes if I go onto the discount websites, then there's so many things that I didn't even know that I needed all of a sudden. Um, and and then I can spend money irresponsibly rather than actually buying stuff that that I wanted in the first place. Buying in bulk, looking for specials, um, and I know like some people, especially if you're living by yourself, buying in bulk, if, if it's perishable goods, then um, that doesn't always work. So um, maybe kind of being having a little bit of a community, if you've got two or three friends who are also flying solo, um, buying in bulk and then splitting it uh, to save some money there. Getting into habits uh, of saving half your increase and your bonus. If you are getting an increase in bonuses, then um, uh, yeah, putting that into savings or investments rather than treating ourselves to expensive things. And then having an emergency savings fund for unexpected things. And, and if I reflect on my childhood years, those were the things that would cause the arguments, the car that breaks down or the, the fridge that's not working or the, those unexpected things. Um, and inevitably there were lots of them. <laughs> um, and so one of the, the good habits that I've got myself into is, is I work on like a three, uh, three month security blanket. I try and make sure that in my savings account, I always have um, 
uh, enough to sustain me for three months if I needed to. And that's then also my emergency savings fund. So if something breaks unexpectedly, then I can grab some money from there. And that that works quite well for me. Um, so I, yeah, Ryan, have we got some good tips in the Q&A box on money saving? I've actually been seeing so quite a few interesting ones. So the, the most interesting one that I read so far is that somebody was saying that they've been uh, taking um, one spouse's income and living off one spouse's income and saving the other spouses, which I think is quite interesting. Yeah. Um, I've got someone else busy saying that, you know, if you want something right away um, or if you want to buy something, give it a day or two and see if you still want it the next day. That's something that I also practice as well. Um, some people have been talking about meal tips and, you know, meal planning. I see somebody also mentioned something about coupons so if that is available mm. in your country I think that's a really really good one um, and then um, just something from my side you know a tip that I also use is I don't know if a lot of people have heard of the 60 40 20 rule where if you save 60 percent of your income 40 percent of it is used for expenses and 20 percent is used for sort of you know um, what you like to call luxury expenses I think that's also quite a nice helpful one that I'd maybe like to to, to give out um, mm. And yeah, so I'm seeing so many great sort of interesting things. So, you know, people talking about, you know, the different ways that they've been trying to spend money. Um, I see somebody's also saying that, you know, sometimes it's 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 uh, why do we focus on savings and not earnings? But I think that's something that, you know, is, is also important to talk about sometimes is that maybe financial security is also, you know, having that conversation with employers and saying, listen, you know, uh, cost of living, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that's a, another conversation. Um, some people have been saying that, you know, um, you know, they, 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 they they try and cut out the eating out as much as possible. However, it is something that is quite difficult to do. Um, so yeah, we're seeing some very, very interesting things. Um, I see somebody also said that, you know, um, credit cards are not all that bad. So I think we our comments there was just that it is a little bit about balance. There are some, um, some advantages, but also we just need to keep an eye on those disadvantages as well. Absolutely, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Ryan. That's great. Yeah. Um, as the, 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 the question around um, focusing on savings and not earnings, I was thinking, you know, sometimes it, um, there's an opportunity for us to have a bit of a side hustle. I know a few people who are doing some of their own stuff outside of work to get some extra income and um, and it's working really well for them because they're, it's, it's normally a hobby or a passion um, and and so they're kind of meeting or, or adding to their fi their finance fi adding to their income while at the same time meeting some other needs uh, around stimulation and and hobbies and so on. So yeah, absolutely great great kind of reflection there in the chat box. Um, another thing that works well for me is is, is uh, shopping seasonally. So I noticed that the price of fruit and vegetables perishables uh, varies in different seasons um, quite significantly sometimes. And so just noticing what is what are the, what what is fruit, what fruit and vegetables are in season and those tend to be a little bit more reasonably priced than the things that are that have been exported because they're out of seasons noticing things like that. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gents. Um, this that t brings us to the, the end of our um, our uh, session today. I want to thank you so much for all the, the insights and the questions in the Q&A box. A uh, reminder that I am here from ICAS um, and that there's the employee assistance um, available to you. So please do connect with us um, going into the ICAS lifestyle website. Um, you It gives you access to all sorts of information on there, whether it's relationships or uh, time management, even financial uh, financial resources. So please do use the, that service that's available to you. Um, I hope that everyone has come away with this from this session with a little bit more awareness um, and maybe some some insights into your what your next step might look like for you based on your priorities, your financial situations. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I'll stay on the line in case there are any questions that are coming through.